If you're trying to lose weight but finding that you're gaining weight because you're not eating less, if the number on the scale just won't decrease even though you're eating less, if despite losing some weight, you've been unable to drop below a certain weight for a while, if you've noticed that you're starting to gain weight again after reaching your ideal weight, then you'll find the answer to what you need to do in this video. Now let's get started. The logic behind losing weight is simple, not complex. We'll consume fewer calories than we burn. But even though the equation is simple, implementing it is tough. If it were easy, everyone would already be at their ideal weight to so. What are these difficulties stemming from? In this video, we'll address the most common problems encountered by those trying to lose weight. By recognizing which of these problems seem familiar to you, you'll learn which areas to focus on. Many people who have encountered almost all of these problems have managed to lose weight, up to 17 kilos, with the guidance of experts and their own experiences. In this video, I'll share insights from experts, scientific research, and personal experiences. And by the end of the video, I'll also reveal the biggest secret that will help us lead a healthy and fit life. Let's start by taking a closer look at the concept of calorie deficit. Many people mistakenly believe that calorie deficit means the energy they burn through exercise cancels out the energy they consume. This is a very incomplete perspective. In reality, the calories we consume, drink, and take in are all from a single source, calorie-rich foods. As for the calories we burn, 10% of them have four sources. Our basal metabolic rate, meaning the amount of calories our bodies burn to stay alive even if we don't move, accounts for roughly 62%. The calories we burn through exercise account for approximately 20%, and the calories we burn through the thermic effect of food, meaning the calories we burn while digesting or storing the food we eat, make up an average of 10%. So, if we can't achieve a calorie deficit, the problem is most likely not. Whether we're exercising enough or not, because as you can see, the contribution of exercise to the equation is very small. So, where's the problem? Why can't we achieve a calorie deficit? Where are we going wrong? Let's delve into that, if we want to lose weight, but are gaining weight instead. The problem most likely lies in the calorie intake side of the equation. We're unable to eat less and consume fewer calories. The possible reasons for this could be insulin resistance, leptin resistance, or another hormonal issue. In cases like these, achieving a calorie deficit becomes nearly impossible because our bodies react strongly to hunger. So, what's the solution? Of course, seeing a doctor. If our doctor acknowledges that there's an issue, but it's not serious enough to be solved through diet alone, they may refer us to a dietitian. With the program prepared by the dietitian, we can lose weight healthily. Or, if the problem is more serious, following the steps recommended by our doctor and implementing them can help if we struggle to eat less for any reason, we won't know the real reason behind it until we see a doctor. Another possible reason for struggling to eat less is emotional eating disorder. Due to some traumas, we might find ourselves turning to food even in the slightest stressful situations, and in these situations, we're actually taking in calories even though we don't feel physically hungry. As a result, achieving a calorie deficit regularly, and therefore losing weight, becomes almost impossible I in this scenario as well, it's imperative to see a psychologist and follow their guidance. They may refer us to a psychiatrist, or maybe not. They might suggest meeting regularly to see if we can solve this problem in any case, we can only learn the true cause of struggling to eat less from an expert who studies us closely. If we're in the scenario where we've started eating less but still can't reduce our weight, the most likely cause is that we're not accurately counting calories. As humans, we're not very good at estimating the calories in foods. The recommended solution here is to track everything we eat for at least 12 weeks after deciding to lose weight to learn how many calories we're actually consuming compared to how many calories we should be consuming. Because many people who do this realize that they're actually consuming far more calories than they thought. We might say that the calories in a salad don't matter, but we don't account for how many calories are in the olive oil or dressings we add. Or we might think that two pieces of chocolate won't hurt. Yet, those two pieces of chocolate might offset the calories we burn during our cardio session that day I in essence. Just as we need to look at our budget to say, I spent less money this month than last month, we need to look at our calorie intake and confirm if it's really the case that I'm consuming this many calories but can't lose weight. We need to make a calorie budget and look at calorie calculations to confirm this. When we start tracking our calorie intake and realize that we still can't lose weight even though we're consuming fewer calories, then it's time to focus on the calories we're burning. Among the calories we burn, 
the two most significant and immediately beneficial categories are the calories burned through exercise and the calories burned through non-exercise activities. At this stage, if we focus on increasing both our exercise and overall movement throughout the day, we'll gradually start losing weight because we're already consuming fewer calories. As we start losing weight, our weight loss speed will slow down, even if we consume the same amount of calories and exercise at the same level. In fact, it might even come to a halt at some point. This is entirely natural because our bodies have adapted to the situation. We're no longer burning as many calories doing the same exercise as before, so. What can we do at this point? If the problem is a decrease in the calories we're burning through exercise or non-exercise activities, then we might think, I'll just exercise more. I'll move more throughout the day. And believe that solves the problem. While this logic is essentially correct, there's something we're overlooking. If you remember the equation, the largest portion of the calories we burn is our basal metabolic rate. That is, yes, exercise and non-exercise activities are important, but now, the calories we burn without doing anything have significantly decreased compared to before. As a result, achieving a calorie deficit becomes more difficult. Hence, our weight loss slows down and eventually stops to AT this point when we say, I was losing weight before, but now it's slowed down, or I just can't seem to get below this weight. It's time to ask ourselves how we can slow down or even stop the decrease in our basal metabolic rate. The best way to slow down or even stop the decrease in our basal metabolic rate is to increase our lean body mass, meaning we're burning fat while simultaneously building muscle. This is why it's essential to start resistance training and ensure we're getting enough protein at this stage. Because for our bodies to not lose a kilo of muscle, they have to burn more calories every day than they would to maintain a kilo of FAT.SO. The higher our muscle mass and the lower our fat percentage, the more calories our bodies will burn to maintain their current shape. Our basal metabolic rate will increase as a result. Thus, we'll start achieving a calorie deficit again and continue to lose weight without having to further reduce our calorie intake, increase our cardio exercises, or move more throughout the day. Or without exercising to the point of exhaustion, or without walking until we drop. And without gaining weight again, we've eaten less, moved more, done cardio, done resistance training, we've gotten enough protein, and finally reached our ideal weight. First and foremost, a big congratulations to ourselves. At this point, we rightfully think, I've reached my ideal weight. I don't want to lose more weight now. That's essentially the right logic. But the body's adaptation we encountered in the third scenario could still pose a problem here. Because by the time we've reached this point, even if we've been exercising regularly, eating healthily, our basal metabolic rate has decreased. It's decreased a little, or at best, stayed the same. And even though it's possible to burn fat and build muscle simultaneously, because we've been trying to achieve a calorie deficit while doing this, we haven't gained muscle as much as those who want to gain muscle. Hence, even though we've reached our ideal weight, we haven't actually achieved the body composition we desire, with the right fat and muscle ratio SO, when we say, I've reached my ideal weight. I don't need to achieve a calorie deficit anymore. If we abandon the habits that got us here, start consuming more calories, stop resistance training, cardio, living an active life, or stop getting enough protein, we'll inevitably start gaining weight again. However, I can say that the solution to this scenario is much easier compared to the other scenarios. Because by the time we reach this point, we'll have a very good understanding of ourselves, both physically and psychologically. Now, what we need to do is turn what we've been doing in the major categories into habits and continue doing them. And also focus on the minor categories. We'll think about what changes I can make here that might bring me even 50 calories, or even 10 calories. At this stage, we can start exploring this slowly. So, what are the minor categories? They're not insignificant compared to the major categories, but they yield fewer calories. These include getting enough and quality sleep, drinking enough water, selecting the majority of our foods from healthy fats, carbohydrates, and proteins to ensure we're getting our micronutrients, and focusing on foods with a high thermic effect. That is, foods that burn or store more calories than normal when we eat them. When we incorporate these into our lives, we might gain small benefits in terms of calorie balance, but will achieve significant benefits for our overall fitness and health. Reaching our ideal weight is just the beginning because our goal isn't to reach the fourth scenario and then go back to the beginning. It's to win this battle.so. How will we achieve this? 
thanks to the big secret I promised at the beginning of the video, we should see these scenarios as a roadmap and start slowly incorporating into our lives the things we'll need to do when we reach a certain stage, even if we haven't reached that stage yet. Because the fifth scenario, a healthy and sustainable fit life, is only possible with healthy habits, and we need time to develop those habits. The earlier we start that needed time, the better our chances of already having developed those habits when we reach the fifth scenario. For example, if we're in the second scenario, meaning we're eating less but not losing weight, and we say there's a problem, do I really eat less? Should I focus on tracking and reducing my intake? That'll be our priority. While that's correct, even though these aren't our top priorities at this stage, instead of thinking I don't need resistance training, I don't need to track my protein intake, we should start slowly discovering these things by thinking I'll have to do these eventually. Which exercise do I like? Pilates? Are resistance bands for me? Is lifting weights at the gym a better option for me? We can start discovering these little by little. We can start thinking about which foods have healthy proteins, which foods should we prioritize, which protein-rich foods do we like more, which ones do we not like, and start discovering these little by little. This way, we'll save time. Moreover, in this example, while these are not our must-haves at the second stage, if we miss two days of exercise, we won't beat ourselves up. Because we know that every step we take is a gain, and the steps we don't take aren't a loss. We haven't reached the third stage yet. Let's not deceive ourselves. Tio reached the fifth scenario. To be able to sustain a healthy and fit life, resistance training is essential. Getting enough protein is essential. Eating healthily is essential. Getting enough and quality sleep is essential. There's no other way around it. The sooner we accept this, the sooner we can start incorporating these habits into our lives. We can prepare ourselves for the fifth scenario earlier, if we think there's still time. And when we get to that stage, we'll think about resistance training then. Someone who says this is more likely to start resistance training when the time comes sometimes, I see a question. Can I lose weight without exercising? The bitter but true answer is no. We can reach our ideal weight without exercise, but maintaining that and keeping our bodies healthy requires exercise. Of course, the same applies to healthy food choices, getting enough and quality sleep, and doing cardio exercises. The sooner we accept this bitter truth, the better. Studies show that more than half of those trying to lose weight fail, and even those who manage to reach their ideal weight, more than half of them can't maintain that weight. What separates those who successfully lose weight and maintain it from the rest is their acceptance of this bitter truth. Until we meet in another video, stay healthy, stay fit. You can share this video with your friends, reach out to me through comments, and subscribe to my channel to stay informed about various videos.